Now, those of you who don't know anything about the state of Jefferson, we should probably explain. The state of Jefferson refers to an area that used to be called the northernmost mines. Now, that goes back to 1849. Uh, we all know about the gold rush, et cetera, sport, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, well, Wairika was one of the richest gold areas in California. And so that section, this section of the country between Grants Pass and Redding was what they referred to as the northernmost mines. Uh, the local residents uh, didn't feel that they were being well served by Sacramento or Salem. You know, some things change and some don't. Uh, and in the 1900s, they started organizing a secession movement to withdraw from Oregon and California and form their own state. And it was going to be called the state of Jefferson. And you have seen this seal sometimes. It has three X on it because they were double-crossed by Salem and Sacramento. Uh, it really got going in 1941. Uh, in fact, at one point they uh, blocked the road and were uh, telling people that they were leaving uh, Oregon or California and entering the state of Jefferson. But uh, World War II began and that was the end of the state of Jefferson. Uh, today, the state of Jefferson is more the, a state of mind than it is a geographic area. So we welcome you all to the state of Jefferson. And uh, this evening, we're going to be celebrating uh, the E-Club of that particular state of mind. Uh, one other thing I need to share with you this morning, or this evening, I gotta go. I mean, we, we meet at 6.45 in the morning, so it, 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 it takes a little while to get adjusted to this, doing things in the evening. Uh, you may wonder about uh, the decorations uh, the tulips you know about, <laughs> and uh, someone will share a little bit of that later. But you also have origami cranes. The hundreds of origami cranes you see tonight carry on a Japanese tradition that was popularized in the 1950s by a Japanese girl, Sadako Suzuki, who survived Hiroshima but developed leukemia. Suzako died at age 12 and her classmates continued to fold the 1,000 cranes that she hoped would bring world peace in accordance with a beautiful Japanese legend. This year's Rotary theme, selected by Rotary International President Tanaka, is Peace Through Service. It powerfully represents our hope for peace in the world and our belief that Rotary, and now the State of Jefferson E-Club, will contribute to that peace. Sadako said of the cranes, I will write peace on their wings, and you will fly all over the world. With the advent, advent of the inter internet, internet and the Rotary E-Club, it seems this the ability to fly all over the world with his message of peace and understanding is more powerful and attainable than ever before. Tonight, we charter an extraordinary club, and we celebrate its limitless, limitless possibilities we salute the vision and the work of those who brought this club to life, uh, especially its president. Uh, it takes a little courage to be the president, the first president of a e club, <laughs> especially when you don't have a clue who all those people who are. <laughs> Finally, we celebrate all who continue the mission and bring the vision to life. Congratulations and gratitude to you all. Thank you. Okay. Would you stand for a moment of reflection, please? Lord, make us an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. Thank you. And with that, have a seat. And I would like to introduce some alumni from Ryla, Thomas Sierra, who, who era, and Jack Garaspi, who are going to uh, present some musical. Several of them I don't know, but I would like to recognize uh, the past past district governor Charlie Cole. Uh, past district governor. Uh, 
Judy Beard Steubing. Past District Governor Hal Kirby. Now we're getting up to some people, at least in my era. Uh, that's because I spent a la the last previous few years in a district south of here, uh, in uh, Lake County, uh, in California, not in, the, in, Arizona, in Oregon. Okay, past District Governor Mike Fishnaler. And past District Governor John Cox. And then I would also like to introduce District Governor nominee designate John Bushnell. And District Governor nominee Tim Mobley. And District Governor elect Jim Lesseur. I think most of you know that the District Governor. Uh, abandoned us for Washington, D.C., yeah. uh, for probably very good reason. Uh, so with that, I welcome all of you folks. And next, next introduction is someone who said they bear no introduction. Uh, certainly, uh, most of you have seen his name here and there. And so with that, I would like to introduce uh, Kevin Martin who is going to uh, make some special announcements, contribution notice, I don't know what he's going to do, and I'm hoping he does. Nobody ever knows what I'm going to do. <laughs> well, that was interesting. He sure butchered some of those names, but, you know, he's, he's, the, uh, he's my past, uh, past president, I guess, of my club that I quit. To join us. <laughs> That's okay. Um, you know, this is this is kind of a dream come true for me. So uh, bear with me for a minute. You know, I uh, I remember uh, some years back when uh, watching. You know, one of the most exciting things you can do, you know, is watch council and legislation. And um, I was uh, just kind of chained to my computer uh, several years ago, probably three, maybe. Anyway, watching as the e-club was concept was presented, um, and I it sparked a dream in me. You know, I wanted to do that. And uh, excuse me if I get teary because I'm kind of an emotional guy, but um, but I'm really a lot tougher than that. You know, but um, I mean, you know, real men don't cry, they say. Uh, but anyway. Um, it was, it was a dream of mine, and, I, and it kept on the back burner, and, I, and it got so busy, you know, with the district website and stuff all the time that I just, just kind of kept putting it off and putting it off. And, you know, it's funny because um, the way this evolved, because about, it, it was just about a year ago, it was in February, actually started in January, um, I decided I'm going to do it, you know. And so I started to build a website, just kind of out of fun, and then I sort of let it sit idle. I went to Mexico. Um, that my wife and I usually go there in the winter. And so we're down there in Mexico and I get an email from uh, Hal, Hal Kirby. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> um, and uh, so, <laughs> you know, so I get this email from Hal and uh, it says uh, something like, you've been talking about having an e-club for a long time and it's time to get your ass off your ass and get it done, you know, <laughs> and I'll help, you know. So I said, okay, well, that's cool. Thanks, Hal. And so um, I got home, and he went to Thailand. Um, so that didn't work out so good. But anyway, so so we anyway we did. So Hal and I, uh, I have to give Hal a, a hell of a lot of credit for um, you know kind of prodding me along. He'd uh, send me nice friendly emails that uh, did how much did you get done, you know? And I mean, so, but. Uh, we finally did it. He did the paperwork initially. He sent me the forms and said, here's what we have to do. And he did the club survey. We presented it to um, our district governor, Chuck Root, and he approved us the concept. And so away we went. And, you know, as, as we went along, 
a few people. I can't name them all um, because um, I just can't remember and I wrote it down but I left a speech home. But um, <laughs> Emily comes to mind. Um, Bruce, uh, Garrett, you know, these people came on board and, and they liked the idea. They, you know, the, the, the common thread that ran through most of us was, you know, we really don't, we really do. We don't, we, we want to quit our club. We don't want to quit. Our, yeah, we do. <laughs> um, but we don't want anybody to know. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's kind of do this and don't tell anybody. And um, that went for a while, but it didn't work out. So um, finally we started, it was like we had to publish names. And, you know, it reminds me of Diane over there. She, uh, she's the one who organized this party, you know, and did a great job, everybody. Let's do it. And, and I might mention that she doesn't want her name mentioned, you know, but it's Diane Palmer, and she just did a great job. And thank you, Diane. Um, and Dick, too. Where's Dick? He's, from, he's probably snoozing in the back there. Hi, Dad. <laughs> There's a joke in our club because we're both Martins that he's my father. Um, but anyway, uh, you know, uh, and so then I can't, I just can't say enough for the support we got from everybody. I mean, the, the members that joined up, I mean, we've got 36 charter members now and I don't want to go into great deal because I think maybe Jim might want to say some things. So I'll leave some of that to him. But, you know, one of the things that's really cool is, uh, you know, that we finally did get the charter, and that's cool. But Hal went and checked, and we're like club number, e-club number 100 in the world. Yeah. So that's, uh, a, I think, a pretty cool number. And um, and we're going to move on. You know, we've, uh, one of the neat things that we are seeing, you know, it was a, it was just an idea, but, you know, we're, we're bringing back Rotarian, so this is one of the really cool things. There, there's a lot of people, there's older people like myself. Well, I'm not really that old, but, you know. Um, <laughs> I'm older than Yeah, but, um, but we don't want to get up early in the morning and go to a boring damn meeting and pay for breakfast, you know, so, <laughs> quite frankly. And, uh, you know, some of you do lunch. But anyway, it's working for us. We're bringing back some Rotarians. We've got new Rotarians that are excited about the electronic concept. Um, there's a lot of people don't understand how we do things, and uh, I'd just like to say that, you know, I join you, I don't really know how we do it either, but, but we seem to be uh, doing it okay, because here we are. So, um, anyway, a, a big thanks. Uh, I'm sorry Dell couldn't be here. And, you know, I, there's another person I want to mention, and, um, and that's Harriet Schlor. You know, I've worked with Harriet for, I don't know how long it's been, 15, 20 years probably. Well, not quite 20, but, you know, and I think back, I've always kind of been a computer geek, but I remember when, and some, a lot of you may, when Rotary was totally opposed to the internet and computers. I mean, completely. They didn't want anything whatsoever to do with it. And you know where we've come now. And you know who's responsible for that is Harriet Schlor. I mean, she pushed it. She's, she's the one that got Rotary on the internet. I'm sure somebody would have done it, but any of you that know Harriet know that there's no better person to get that done. <laughs> and she did it. And I think it's really cool. It's, I'm sorry she can't be here tonight, but to get that, she's in Washington, D.C. getting an honor as one of those 12 people. Um, and it's, you know, that's a pretty special thing. And so we all have Harriet to thank a lot. And, uh, and I think that's all I have. So with no further ado, I would like to introduce our district governor-elect, Jim Lassier. Great. If you'll come up, Jim. I'm going to do the official passing of the mic. Excellent. <laughs> okay, yeah. Thank you. Before you leave, before oh. you leave, and Ralph, would you come up too? You know, we've had a lot of champions of electronic communications in our district. Harriet obviously was a significant part of that. I live in Bend, and I know we've had from time to time thoughts about changing the name of Ben to Harriet Slore <laughs> because she's that influential. 
But here are two other individuals that I've had the privilege of working with for about a year and a half on electronic communications and where we're going and why is a good idea and what isn't and etc. But these gentlemen have put in tremendous amounts of work on not only at the district website, but they helped out clubs, have championed where electronic communications and things like go to meetings and webinars, etc., might be beneficial. That is the future in a lot of respects of where Rotary is going because it's so pervasive in the world. These two individuals put us out front of everybody else. Thank you. You know, the world is changing, and I'm a bit of an academic student of change because of the kind of work that I have done over my career. Uh, one of those individuals is an individual named Thomas Friedman, who wrote the book, The World is Flat. And it really is flat. Things don't happen the way they used to. Things have speeded up. And so Rotary's future, in a lot of respects, has to do with how you adjust to that. When I was a healthcare administrator, we had a group of radiologists that were trained American physicians who read our x-rays in the middle of the night from Australia because they were during the day there and would do the x-ray readings and then email them to us so that we had them first thing in the morning. And that is just one of a million examples of how this flat world has changed. Russie Swikert, who was a, an astronaut in the early years of the mission uh, to the moon, used to talk about when I first got up in orbit, and look down on the world, I would look at things like Houston and Cape Canaveral. And after four or five trips around the globe, I would cease to look at those things and begin to look at no borders, no nations. We were one world. And that is really profound to me, how being up in space changes your perspective and doesn't illuminate the kinds of things that sometimes we are concerned about. When Rotary first was given that opportunity to look at having a e-club, it was summarily rejected because it did not fit in the old paradigm. Well, buggy whips didn't really make it to the 21st century either. And so we all have to embrace that kind of change. And this new e-club that's the 100th in Rotary's world happens to be in District 5110, and it took a lot of overcoming that resistance. Harriet helped, Kevin helped, Ralph helped, Hal helped. There's a lot of people that helped birth this. And so I applaud you for those kinds of things. Uh, many, many Rotarians need to drive that kind of change. We have 36 charter members of this club from Oregon, California, Idaho, Colorado, Pennsylvania, Mexico, Italy, Germany, Switzerland, and did I miss England? <laughs> so it is truly an international club, and Rotary is becoming more and more international all the time, even though we've said we're an international organization. I had an opportunity to hear two different speakers talk about some examples of how that internationality is beginning to contribute to world peace. One was at uh, a group that had a discussion about the Middle East and whether or not we were going to establish new Rotary Clubs, especially in places like the West Bank. And these two individuals got up. They were very close friends, not married. One was a female Muslim, the other one was Jewish. 
and they talked about how two or three clubs in the West Bank had been established because Israelis decided to go over there, charter those clubs, and help support their development. In that endeavor, they started making friends between those people and the Israelis. It's like that that's going to lead to world peace. The second example had to do with an NID in the uh, state of Pakistan. That's one of the three countries that are still left with polio. They were having trouble doing enough NIDs to stay ahead of the game. And so they asked their friends from India to come and help them. India and Pakistan have not been very close friends <laughs> over the years. But now they're getting to know each other on a personable basis underneath the radar of politics. So it's those kinds of things that can happen. And certainly that relates back to what we're doing with an e-club here because it truly is global. I had an opportunity one time when I was having a little fuss with the Catholics who were running our hospital about sterilizations. <laughs> and one of the priests came to give me a lecture. And so I listened to his lecture and I said, well, you know, I'm actually going to send a message to the Pope to explain what we're doing here. And he said, you can't do that. It's got to go up the hierarchy of the Catholic Church. And I said, come here, sit down in front of my computer. There's the email. <laughs> This is the send button. <laughs> and I bypass the bureaucracy. <laughs> so that's what these pioneers are doing. They're bypassing a lot of things that perhaps have plagued uh, Rotary to some extent from, from a perspective, but there are other places where uh, that will continue on and serve us very, very well. The club has 19 charter members. Uh, who have our experienced Rotarians, 200 years worth of experience in a brand new club. That's pretty amazing. 16 are multiple Paul Harris Fellows, 3 are major donors, 12 are benefactors, and there are some that are even getting a little old and consequently they're members of the Bequest Society. <laughs> That's a good thing. I'd like to ask Bill Grau to come on up and uh, help us uh, with a little bit of a ceremony, uh, but first I would like to also ask your president, Emily, to come up and receive this virtual charter. <laughs> Emily, on behalf of Rotary International and District 5110, I would like to present to you the Charter of the Rotary Club of the State of Jefferson. Jefferson. <laughs> All right. To be seen later. Yes. The revelation doesn't happen until much later. Would you like to say something? I just want to thank um, Kevin and Hal for accepting me. Because when I first heard about their effort, I thought, ooh, this sounds really interesting. This may just fit what I need right now. And I sent, went to the website, sent a message, said, I'm interested, tell me more. I didn't hear anything for a while. I thought, well, <laughs> uh, hmm, maybe they found me wanting. And so after a while, I did hear back from them. And I think I ran into Hal one time and I asked him a little bit more about it. And pretty soon I thought, yeah, this fits my current <coughs> circumstances. I want to know more about this, and I, I want to be part of this exciting effort. So lo and behold, they accepted me into the group, and the rest is history. And I'm so pleased to be able to hang on to their coattails and be dragged across this rotary year and the next rotary year, because I'm, going, I'm president this year, and I'm president next year. So they're going to they're gonna be dragging me all, all the way through the next year. And if we didn't have these 19 very experienced Rotarians in the club, all of this would be much, much more difficult. So it's an exciting time. And next year is going to be a great year. We're going to get just launch into service. 
and really do great things and that may never have been done before, but Judy has always encouraged us to do things even if they haven't been done before. So stay tuned. So we've asked Bill as Assistant Governor um, to read the names of the charter members of this e-club. Okay, so where's Mitch? I think, Mitch, you want to participate in this as well? Maybe. <laughs> wow, look at the decoration. Why not? Well, I first have to say, sorry, um, my interest in, the, in, in this club has started back when I became the uh, district secretary. I had to follow Harriet and then I immediately got to know Kevin and Ralph immediately. And my IT person at the company said, how come you know so much? Well, I have some great instructors in that. And when I started hearing about this club, uh, it just was automatic. Uh, it was just, I'm a morning person, still a morning person, but uh, this concept of club is just a wild moment because when you're a membership director for the district, they say, I'm too busy. I said, that's what Rotary is about. Busy people are Rotarians. And the internet provides another avenue of being a Rotarian virtually worldwide. So it's a great pleasure to be and an honor to be a part of this club. So the first group is? Well, what I, the first group, we have 12 groups, uh, I mean three groups of 12. And the first group is those who Rotarians who were current members that transferred from their current members to this club. And tonight we're going to begin to recognize the Rotarians that have directly made those transfers. They represent 210 years of Rotary service among the nine who have, of the 12 who have transferred. They have served local clubs and district levels and zone levels. We're honored to have their continued leadership and Rotary drive to serve the community. All right, very good, thanks, man. Well, let me tell you who those 12 are. Jay Ackerman. Come on up. Is Jay here? How about Mitch Allen? Oh, here we are. Pin myself. Brian Bray. Brian. You know, you may have rotary pins. This is a service of a rotary e pin. Oh. It's virtual. Virtual, yes. <laughs> and how about Emily Francona? Does anybody know Emily Francona? And her trusted sidekick, driver. Rick Francona, her driver. Her driver, yes. Don't ever ask him which one was higher rank. I mean, that was And how about Hal Kirby? Ah, uh, Kirby. <laughs> And there's rumors that Francie's in line, but uh, that's not that's not confirmed yet. Secret. <laughs> Wendy Kincaid. And Wendy, every equal lady gets a rotary scarf. <laughs> How about Kevin Martin? Who's that? Kevin. Don't trip over the tripod. <laughs> and Craig May. He's not here. Garner McDonald. <laughs> Carol Ruggeri. Ralph Zeller. Yeah. Those are those are the twelve that are transferring. Another group of another group of Rotarians, those who had to leave Rotary, and some of those only just been a few months ago they left Rotary. Some have been a little longer than that. So we've learned in this neutral club that uh, this gives another way of being continued to be a Rotarian. So I want to thank you uh, for you accepting this invitation to join this club of worldwide friendship and service for of Rotary. 
This invitation was extended to you because we believe that your leadership qualities are allied to those qualities of head and heart which fit you to interpret and impart the message of Rhodey to your fellow members. You represent 176 of Rhodey's service among the 12 of you. Okay, and the first is John Allman. Robert Block. Robert. Uh, hey. Web host, and we really appreciate him a lot. Well, very good. This is this is interesting for me too because I haven't met a lot of these people. <laughs> um, how about Karen Brockett? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> James Cooper. Dolores Finch. Bruce Garrett. Okay. Carolyn Gina. And that's. Did I pronounce that correctly? All right, I was coached. I well, just want to make sure I wasn't set up on that, because right? I don't want. Song is next. Pin. How about <laughs> George Gilman? Larry Holcomb. <laughs> Song's next, I just got that. Richard, uh, that's going to be after Emily sings. Did y'all know that Emily's going to sing tonight? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> let's see, did we do, let's see, I lost my place there. Larry Holcomb, Rich, Richard Martin? Richard. Good job, son. <laughs> All in the family. Huh? And I'm thinking Theodore Rose is none other than Ted Rose. And I think he's in Kalima and not here this evening. Joan Williams? Okay, that would be the second group of 12. Okay, the last group of 12 are actually new members of Rotary. You've been chosen for membership because our members believe you to be a leader of your particular a vocation and that you manifest those qualities of heart and mind that, which fit you to interpret and impart your message of Rhodey to the community at large. You represent your vocation. Any contribution of educational value pertaining to your business must naturally come to us through you. On behalf of Rotary National, our district and your club, we we'll congratulate you for becoming our newest members of Rotary. And I'm not sure how many are, uh, are here, actually. The first one I know is not, and that's Michael Chavez. And he's from Coos Bay North Bend, and it was my privilege to sponsor Michael. And one of the things he stressed to me was, he'd do it if there aren't any meetings. And I said, no meetings, no meetings. <laughs> so, uh, Patrick Crane. <clears throat> Milton Finch, senior. Port Orphan. Wendy Fishmeller. Is not here. Correct. Right? England. <laughs> Devin Gaddy. Did Martin. I pronounce that? Heather. Oh, I'm really going to put you Switzerland. Yeah. Heather Hutan. Geneva. Karen Kibbe. No way. <laughs> Jacqueline Oakley. She's my sister, so I accept her again for her. Sure. Yeah. You That's sure so can. <laughs> Accepting the award tonight. And... <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, You've heard this thank as you. well. I will. Thank you. Let's see. Okay. Um, Mara Pfeiffer. Pennsylvania. Fabrizio Signori. Italy. Italy. Isn't this impressive? Italy. Not my pronunciation, the fact that these people are from all over the planet. Mm -hmm. Melissa Weinblatt. Idaho. Idaho. Christine Walter. German. How many Hal did you sponsor into this club? <laughs> Besides your kids. Hal Goodson. Those are all guests. Okay, very good. <laughs> a 
I want to say further that with this acceptance of, of this rotary emblem, which opens the doors of friendship and bridge gaps, I pledge, this is what you're saying, you members, not to be just a clog in the rotary wheel, but to be part of the driving force. All right. <laughs> to make rotary attendance a joy, not to be a burden. To serve my club at any capacity which I'm asked to serve. To be ambassador by vocation to my club and to the community and to society, as I know which will vindicate my affiliation with rotary. To be proud to be associated with the person of the community, knowing with the deep convictions that international understanding is the root, not the fruit of international peace. Put peace through service in your hands. You may be stimulated by the friendship you will find here, and may we return knowing that you have added source of strength to our club. Let us pledge to keep Rotary growing. Hey. I was going to make that an hour that you didn't allow me to earn <laughs> I know, I was standing by. <laughs> Just one thing that I wanted to add. Uh, District Governor Dell would have loved to have been here tonight. But a few days ago, he was called by the White House because we had put in some people from District 5110 for a major champion award that the White House was using to honor Rotary in this country. And out of all the districts in the United States, only 12 were selected. Two were selected from this district. One is Nancy Hughes for her stove project, and the other one is Harriet Slore for obviously the many things that she's done. But for Shots for Tots. And so they are at the White House, and I'm sorry we had to present a virtual award to you, but Dell has the charter and he's gonna get Obama to sign it. All so right. yeah. <laughs> Thank you all for a wonderful amount of work that you've done. It's very, very much appreciated. You're making Rotary alive in the 21st century. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. We have a couple orders of business. Uh, the first, I'd like Diane to come up here. Diane is somewhat shy, and is, as you know, if you know her very well, and is very reluctant to get in front of, of audiences, but I've been asked to have her come up here. So, I don't know why you're up here. I just asked to have you come up here. This is the lady that makes things happen behind the scenes. Uh, when she volunteered to do this as a member of our sponsoring club, we kind of turned it over to her and every now and then she'd ask a question, but we knew it was in very good hands and we didn't have to do any micromanagement, it just happened and here we are having a good time. Diane, thank you so much for your professionalism and for your friendship and for your dedication to making our club happen and to Rotary. of our club because she has the boa. You cannot have her. This is not a discussion. Uh, please take a tulip and a crane and that is the end of our official evening. So the last part of the agenda is have fun.